There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah.
Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice, lift your hands, and worship the one who sits upon the throne. Give him all you've got.
Amen. Lord, this is our prayer. It's our desire, Lord. And we receive it in the name of Jesus. That our steps will be ordered in your word. You teach us how to work in your word. How to talk in your word. How to live in your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, voice of one. Thank you, Springs, for the praise and worship. Wasn't it awesome? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Order our steps in your word. Praise the Lord. Okay, welcome someone before you take a seat. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Ask the person, how was your day? Praise the Lord. good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Order my steps in your word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you once again for the opportunity that we have to be drawn together as your children to fellowship with one another and to fellowship with you, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we are grateful already. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege we have joining the saints in glory, joining all the occupants of heaven to sing praises to you, to worship you, to love you. Thank you, Lord, for this awesome privilege. And so, Lord, as we continue, we open up our hearts, O Lord, that by your Spirit you'll come and breathe your word upon us so that we can indeed walk in your word, speak in your word, live in your word, do business in your word, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord our God, for in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Amen. How many of us know our God is good? He's a wonderful, wonderful God. And he's a mighty, mighty God. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Okay, for the contributions, please, let's try and make them brief to the point so that we can save time, okay? Praise the Lord. So anyone wants to make a contribution, a reminder, a question from what we learned on Sunday, if you can do that, so you raise your hand quickly. Praise the Lord. Okay, we have a brother at the back. Praise God. Thank you. And we'll have a sister here. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I remembered that on Sunday, um, you teach us about how the people of Israel, uh, uh, how, the, how God feed them and do many things to them. So, to my understanding, actually, that they were ungrateful. That is the main thing that I draw my attention there. They are ungrateful, and that leads them not to trust on God. Because God told them, do this, do this, and they are still complaining. God told them that they should take the bread to eat on one day, but they are still taking extra so to me now, they are ungrateful because if they are grateful with the one that God gave them, they will be, you know, they, they will thank him for what he has done. So that is it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is busy loving us and taking care of us and wanting the best for us. But as long as we don't appreciate what he's doing, we will not also enjoy the best of him. I think that's what he's saying. And God will give us wisdom, praise the Lord, so that we will appreciate him. Like one of the things during the worship, you know, as we're singing and just blessing the Lord and exalting his name, I was asking, what is the point of all this? It's not just to get our emotions high. If God is, a, what was that song we're singing again? Um, Jehovah is your name. My you know, the way we're singing that song, it doesn't make sense if I disobey him and say he's that big. If someone is that big, I can't argue with him. Praise the Lord. And, you know, it was a, like a conversation. 
He said, now you have an important flight to catch and, um, and someone says, wait. Okay? And while you're waiting, time is passing. Praise the Lord. And the flight is very important. You, if you miss it, you're going to miss something big. Now, what will make you keep waiting? The person says, wait. And you know that you're late. You will miss this flight. The person says, wait. In at a point, you will ignore the person and start going to where you're going. Okay? But what if the person has 11 private jets? Or 12? And he says, wait. <laughs> will you leave him to go and catch a flight? That's what it's about. So when we come to worship God, it's to help us properly locate him. So that obedience can be easy. You see, the sum total of Christianity is to obey God. Anything we do, anything we learn, anything we see, anything we say that does not propel us towards obedience is wasting our time. Praise the Lord. Because, you see, as big as God is, he can only bless you when you obey him because he'll bless you with instruction. Okay, so the worship is to really say this God is big. So if this God says, jump, I will jump. Praise the Lord. If he says, sit down, I will sit down. Praise the Lord. That's why he said to Joshua, walk around the city and then shout. What did Joshua do? He walked around and shouted. It depends on who is telling you. There are some persons that are giving instructions. You say, explain to me how. What do you mean by that? But there is a way, there is a, uh, the English is not, there is a big, he will be big. Eh? <laughs> there is a mighty, he will be mighty. Whatever he says, what will you do? You'll do it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Okay, one more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The, the point has been made. What I got on <laughs> Sunday, actually, was that, you know, the password that I need to enter into the rest that God has prepared for me is obedience. And I also learned on Sunday that, um, you know, if somebody doesn't obey God, the person begins to stink spiritually. And it's a matter of time before the person will begin to stink even physically. That was what I got on Sunday. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. So obedience, obedience, obedience. Obedience to the word. The word is meant to bring obedience. Okay, let me start from part of what we should have touched on Sunday. I just mentioned it. Romans 1, 5 and Romans 16, 26. You know, Romans is one of the major epistles written to communicate the gospel, you know, by the wisdom and the grace that was given to the apostle Paul. And this is one thing that is key there. From at the beginning, he said, through him, talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, says, we have received grace and apostleship. For what? Obedience to the faith. Through Christ, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith. So all of us are apostles unto obedience. Whether there is a, a mantle on you, whether you are carrying an office, what we are doing in this faith is obedience. We've been sent, commissioned for obedience to the faith. Let's see uh, Romans 16, 26. Romans 16, 26. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, if you have it in your Bible, you can read it. Okay. Thank you. Is this it? Romans 16, 20 what? Okay. It says, but now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God. For what? Obedience to the faith. So the sum total of the whole thing God did in Christ is to bring us back to where Adam and Eve fell. To bring us to a place of what? Obedience to the faith. Now, if you enter it, you enter rest. If you don't enter it, you will still be, you know, here and there. The days you walk in it, you find peace and joy. The Bible says that you may be filled with all peace and joy in what? In believing. Okay, so the whole thing is actually very basic and very simple and very workable. Somebody say we receive grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Okay, uh, I, I want to ask us a question, or well, not a question, I think we answered it on Sunday. The bread that the manna that the children of Israel um, was, was given, or yeah, where the children of Israel was given by God. It's God that was giving, so God is the worst now. Okay, whatever. You know what I'm saying, Abby. Uh-huh. <laughs> the manna where God gave them. Uh-huh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the, the manna was a manna, you know, able to last two days. The, okay, does the manna last for how long? How long does the manna last? Sorry? <laughs> yes, sir. According to what, what God says it should be, isn't it? So we saw that some days the manna didn't last overnight another time it lasted what overnight and then we also remember that in the ark of the covenant it lasted for decades praise the lord now what we're learning is this that before any physical thing was made the word is praise the lord and after god made the physical thing he did not deny the word its power so you as a believer have an advantage over the unbeliever. The unbeliever can only operate at the level of matter. Praise the Lord. The unbeliever can only operate at the level of what the word had already made. And it stops there. But you and I as believers can go now over and beyond the the matter that was made by the word. And go to the word. And then that same word can now come what? And overthrow the situation. That's why the Bible can say, let the weak say what? I am strong. So I'm weak in body, but I can receive strength by the word. Praise the Lord. I'm sick in the body, but because with the stripes I have been healed, I can receive healing by the word. Praise the Lord. Let the poor say I'm rich. I can walk in the power, in the provision that God has made over and beyond my circumstances. That's why Jesus Christ said to Peter, lest we offend. Okay, we know that we haven't done business. You haven't done fishing for years, for some time now. But we have an obligation to meet. So what do you do? Go now, put your hook, the first fish you catch, we're going to make that fish to bring enough income to settle all our problems. Somebody will get miracle money in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Because God is able to do it. He does it. Hallelujah. He, he works miracles. Peter went, caught fish. Now fish doesn't eat money. Fish doesn't swallow money. Praise the Lord. It's not warm that you find in fish, you know, in fish's stomach. But because the word said it, and now how it came to be the first fish, I don't know. I mean, these are some things that you sit down and ponder about and just worship God. How did he know the first fish? How did he even know which part of the river? That Peter will put his hook on. So the miracle occurred as the hook caught the fish. Praise the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was, it, because if that wasn't it, how else do you explain it? It was as the hook caught the fish and the word of hovering over said, the fish that Peter catches should what? Should have gold in its mouth. Then it happened. <laughs> Somebody said, I believe God. Somebody said, believe God, and he will work for you in the name of Jesus. He will work for you in the name of Jesus. So, so, so we, we have in Deuteronomy 8, part of the scriptures we looked at, where God was making us know his intent. I like statements like that in the Bible because they summarize a lot of things. In Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, verse 3 he said, so he humbled you allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna which you did not know nor did your fathers know that he might make you know praise the lord so god wants me to know something say to yourself god wants me to know something yes god wants me to know that man shall not live by what bread alone but by but man lives okay i'm quoting the new testament now But man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. 
This is what God wants me to know. Am I knowing it? We want to see how we can know it more. Now he went on verse 4, says, Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens a son, so the Lord, God, the Lord your God chastens you. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of, vine, of vines and fig trees, and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing. I thought someone should be saying amen. amen. A land whose stones are iron, out of whose hills you can dig copper. 10 says, when you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Can, can, can you see something here very important? That God is not against our enjoyment. Too. Praise the Lord. God is against our being misled, our being confused, our idolatry. He says, when you have eaten and you're full, what should be the response? You do what? Now, you and I know that the common experience is not that, is that when people eat and are full, what do they do? They say, who is the Lord? That's where the problem is. <laughs> Praise God. If you do a sample of those who are in church on Sunday and those who are in church on Wednesdays, and those who serve God more fervently, you see that the lesser blessed of God's people serve him more than the more blessed of God's people. Because it's not this, this, this doesn't happen. When you have eaten and are full, you shall bless the Lord. So we should have a competition of people, the more blessed world, serving more. But you know it's not so. Praise the Lord. You and I know it's not so. We should have mothers that now have the fruit of the womb, serving more. We should have the sisters that now have husbands, serving more. But you know it's not true. It's those who are looking for. So we are looking for him so that he can give us the bread so that when we eat the bread and are full, we can forget him. <laughs> Praise God. And that's where the problem is. Like we saw, the bread can last when he says it should last. Amen. So God blessing us, God blessing his people, God prospering his people. God making us, you know, the, everything that we are. And, and the life of David is a case study. He, he blessed David so much that even when David sinned in the sin of Bathsheba, God said to him, David, what is wrong? I've given you so many wives. And if there were not enough, what would I do? I would have given you more. God is good. Let me say God is good. Last Wednesday, I think we learned that we must settle that. He is a good word. God. He's a good God. He's a good God. The, the only bad that we have in our world today is not because God stopped being good. It is a problem of man. And because God is holy, because God is mighty, because God is righteous, he cannot become unrighteous. If God endorses evil, he becomes unrighteous. Praise the Lord. So that is a challenge. So when a man is pushing and, you know, uh, 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 trying to walk in proximity, in holiness, in obedience, setting his life apart unto God. He's a wise man. He's looking for peace, joy, and rest. Praise the Lord. He, he knows that this is where he's going to come from. He knows that this is what he's going to do. He said, goodness and mercy shall do what? Follow you. Oh, he wants goodness and mercy to follow him. He doesn't want chaos. Praise the Lord. He, he doesn't want a, a, a fear to follow him. I think it was Pastor King this afternoon sharing with that the world will continue to multiply anxiety. One of the greatest resources that God has gifted his children is peace. You don't know what you have as a child of God, that you have peace. Peace of mind. The unbeliever doesn't have peace. Praise the Lord. For those who traveled home for Christmas, you see some persons last Christmas, God blessed them, they built a mansion, you know, maybe came back with the latest car then. And the man is very happy. This Christmas, he comes back and the neighbor has built a bigger mansion. What has started? When, who, who you be? 
Since when? Praise the Lord. But you see, the believer is already satisfied in Christ. He's seated in heavenly places far above what? Principal, he's not measuring house. He's not measuring wife. He's not measuring car. He has gotten the end of his faith, which is the salvation of his soul. His hope is over and beyond. He's not looking to be the, you know, the guy who tiwa most or the, you know, whatever it is he's called. He's just content. That's why the Bible can say godliness with contentment is what? It's great gain. The world can never be contented. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why your kingmaker wants to be king. <laughs> and his age cannot be known. And his source of wealth cannot be found. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Those people have problems. Oh, pity on believers. Praise the Lord. Pray for them. Let them be saved. Okay? So, so, so it says, when you have eaten and are full, that's what I just want us to catch this evening. God wants us you know, he has no problem. And we're going to go to Genesis and we see how this whole thing began. God wants you full. He wants you satisfied. He wants you at rest. He wants all of that. The only thing is that his word controls everything. So when you step out of alignment with the word, there are repercussions. Just like we saw in the, you know, the children of Israel. If they kept the bread to the next day when they shouldn't, what happens? automatically it breeds worms and it begins to stink. And the place where there are worms and there are things stinking, life can be so good. Praise the Lord. Then the other time also, the Sabbath day, when they were to gather for two days, those who didn't gather would starve. Did God want them to starve? So it's possible some of us are living lives be below and um, over and above. Below and what? Under. <laughs> some of us are starving but God doesn't, didn't want you to starve God doesn't want you to starve so that's Sabbath, some people will just be hungry and then they'll be murmuring my manna turned to uh, 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 or whatever, sorry I didn't see manna this morning, but God has said gather twice praise the Lord so a, a lot of us are beneath where God wants us to be and it might appear as if that is your normal location. No, that is not where God wants you located. He wants you higher. He wants you better. Praise the Lord. He wants you more healthy, more prosperous, more joyful, all of that. But you did not order your steps in his word. You did not walk in the word. So we are receiving grace in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So if, if you read on this Deuteronomy 8, we can actually stop. It's just saying basically the same thing. He said, I just want you blessed, but I want you to walk with me. God has a desire. God made us. The Bible said, let us make man, what? In our image, according to our likeness. We've learned here that the greatest expression of love is togetherness. Imagine if you, if you, if you had um, in, in your office, you're a CEO of a big organization, okay? And then you just want to really honor you know, someone that has worked so well in that organization, what do you do? You keep bringing the person closer to you, isn't it? Closer to you. That's what God did. God, when God was making man, he thought of what to do. He said, let us make him in our image according to our likeness. God, that is how much devoted or devotion God has for man. God loves us. Let me hear you say, God loves me. Yes, that is what he, and because of that, he wants the best for us. He wants us to look like him. He wants us to talk like him. He wants us to walk with him. He has the best plans for us. So he wants fellowship and relationship. Praise the Lord. That's what he wants. He wants fellowship and relationship. Okay? Now, now let's, let's go to, to the, uh, Genesis. Let's, let's see what we learn from there, from Adam and Eve's experience. I saw something interesting there. In Exodus chapter 2, sorry, Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. <clears throat> Praise God. Verse 8. It says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Verse 9. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for 
Notice there. Every tree there was what? Pleasant to the sight and good for what? Then he went on and says, the tree of life was also where? In the garden. So what does it mean? The tree of life was what? Pleasant to the eyes and good for food. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was there as well. So what does it mean? The tree of good, uh, knowledge of good and evil was what? Clap for yourselves. Now, in Genesis chapter 3, when the tempter came to tempt Eve, this is what happened. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. I'm reading 3.1. And he said to the woman, Has God in this said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tr fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Okay. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Now read verse 6, what the woman said. So the woman saw what? So when the woman saw that good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, okay, she took of his fruit. And le le let me ask us now, what new thing did the woman see? Yes. The first two things she said is already there. But you see, when the tempter comes, he's going to twist what is basic and make it appear, you know, so glamorous and spectacular and enticing and all of that. The tree had always been what? Pleasant to the eyes. The tree had always been what? Good for food. Now, by that statement she made, she was trying to bring herself to where we bring ourselves to when we want to disobey God. He's keeping something what? Good from me. This thing God is saying does not make sense. How can I forgive him? Do you know what he did to me? Praise the Lord. But we'll, we'll see something as we go now. Let's go back to verse 2. Sorry, chapter 2. In chapter 2, verse 16, the Lord God commanded the man saying what? Of every tree of the garden you may what? Freely eat. 17 says what? But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not what? For in the day you eat of it, what will happen? Now, note that in this 16 and 17, God did not say to Eve, that fruit is ugly. That fruit doesn't taste well. Is that what he said? What did he say? He said, do not eat it. When you and I, mature to where God's will becomes our decision. The tempter has entered trouble. When you don't process what God is saying. So God says, go this way, go that way. Don't go this way, don't go. You don't sit and analyze it. Because God did not explain to Eve. Are you with me? God didn't say to Eve, this fruit tastes differently from the other one. This fruit is not as beautiful as the other ones. God just said, this fruit kills. That's all he said. And, and like, like the natural man, man, you know, you know, human beings, they just explore things that don't help. You know, say the sex is this, is that, is that. It's a waste of time. We don't even know what it is. But whatever it was, all he said was, this fruit will kill you. Now, if Eve gives 10 reasons or 10 attractive things about the fruit, it does not overthrow the word of God that says what? This fruit will kill you. Now, brothers and sisters, what are those things you're doing that God said you shouldn't do? You have reasons for doing it, Abby. All God is saying is that it will kill you. You can convince pastor, you don't understand. Where I live, you don't understand. As a young man, you don't understand. But you know be wood. You don't understand. This and that, you don't understand. All I'm saying is that what God said you shouldn't do will kill you if you do it. I know get sense. I just hear. Praise the Lord. Brethren, this is where 
the battle is. When the Christian comes to understand that this God is wiser than me. Because see, what happened here was, Eve got into a conversation. If she had looked at the tree and it was not as fine, as good looking as the other trees of the field, you know she wouldn't eat it. She wouldn't eat it because she's going to agree with God that is what it will kill. But nothing like that was permitted her. You know why? God, the last part where she said, desirable to make one wise. God is the one who is wise, isn't it? And in his wisdom, he has said what? Don't eat it. What are you going there again for? So you want to compare wisdom. And the Bible says to us that the foolishness of God is what? Is wiser than men. So where do you want to start? Praise the Lord. Where do you want to start to contend with God? Okay. Where do you want to start with contend? Some of us, many of us are doing things now that we know God said we shouldn't do. But we will argue it out. We will defend it. We will make cases for it. But all he's saying to us tonight is please live by my word and be blessed. Praise the Lord. Do it according to my word and be blessed. On, on Sunday, we looked at Colossians 2 verse 8. And we can pass through there again today. Colossians 2 8 begins to tell us about philosophy. Empty the city. The, 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 the apostle writing says, beware lest anyone cheat you. Through what? Philosophy, empty the city, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world that we talked about. We call that science and all of that. The other one, wisdom and all of that. These are the things that create problems for us. You know why? They are working. They make sense. They are defendable. Praise the Lord. Some of them are practicable. Or they are, uh, is it practical? Yeah, practicable. You see, some of them are just it, 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 going against it. Doesn't make sense. Some of us work in offices now, and the Bible says, do not be men pleasers, but do your work as what? Unto the Lord. And there are five of you in the office giving work to do, okay? You're born again, you're a Christian, you know that scripture. And the rest of the four people won't do their work. Whenever they see the boss, they just start doing it. They say, good morning, sir. You know, they're doing that. And you just greet the boss like a normal person. Good morning, sir. And you continue to do Others are running around him. And promotion comes. He promotes them. Isn't that what he's doing? He's a man. He's going to think that those who are doing eye service are doing more. But what does the Bible say? It says, don't be a man pleaser. So in the eyes of the man, you may actually appear like someone who is a problem in the office. But now trusting God means that you don't know how. You don't know when. Okay, I'll tell you this story. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I read this story somewhere. A king, a king had a beautiful, beautiful daughter, and he wanted to give her out in marriage. She was of age. So he called the subjects and said he was going to do a test for them. And he brought a seed, okay? And he took the seed and said, all the qualified young men, come around. I'm going to give you this seed, and after a month, everyone come back with the seed you know, in a verse, let's see how your own seed has grown. Praise the Lord. So all these young, you know, eligible bachelors took their seed and went home. And after about, you know, I don't know how long, maybe one month, two months, the time it should take for the seed to sprout. Some of them noticed that their seed wasn't responding. So quickly, quickly, some of them, their mothers went, some of them, their fathers went, Everybody in the house assisted. They went and found seed as quickly as they could and planted. And then the seed started sprouting and growing and they were nurturing it, putting fertilizers and all of that. So that day came, maybe 50, maybe 100 eligible bachelors lined up. Everyone will present their beautiful seed to the king. And the king will look at it, smile, look, gauge how fresh the, the leaves are, you know, how smooth the color and all of that. And they will stay by the side. They went on and on. Finally, one man came. One eligible bachelor came. And trembling, he carried his own verse. 
and brought it before the king. I said, king, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. It didn't grow. It didn't grow. So the man was expecting, the young man was expecting some harsh punishment from the king. And the king laughed and said, finally, one honest man in the kingdom. The king gave them dead seed. He gave them seed that was dead, that would not grow. But because of the wisdom of man, because of philosophy, because of strategy, these are the things that are killing us. When it didn't work, they brought star. <laughs> when this one is not working, add bobo. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? When it's not working, copy from nightclub. Do you understand? When it's not working, hire people to share testimonies. When it's not working, the king said, finally, one honest man in my kingdom. Because he knew that the seed he gave them was dead. That is what we are learning, people of God. God knows where you are. God knows what you're going through. And God has said, do it according to Christ. Praise the Lord. Do it according to Christ. It may appear as if you're not getting any success. The one who sent you is the determiner of success. Don't get success from your neighbor. Don't look for him to confirm you. Look to the one who commissioned you to confirm you. Look to the one who is your father. Someone is saying, ah, this sister was living anyhow, or that brother was, or this person. Leave all of them. You don't know. Praise the Lord. Your own is to what? Work according to his word. Work according to his word. And thankfully, the Bible has said, let us not judge anything what? Before it's time. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, when he comes, that many are going to come to him and say, ah, Baba Jesus, we did many mighty miracles in your name. With this one, so what, is it, what did he say? He said to them, he said, depart from me, what? I never knew you. How can you do such things in his name and he doesn't know you? It meant that you were working principles that worked. Recently now, a, 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 lot of, a lot of pastors, I saw one and he gathered, I think, two billionaires and they want to teach Christians how to become billionaires. And they're paying, I think the amount is, I, I, either, did I see $1,000 or something? Did anybody see that somewhere in Lagos? You know, some major money to attend this, you know, workshop so that they can teach people. All those things for those who don't have Christ. Praise the Lord. Yes, you know what I mean? It's, a, it's understandable. But when you have Christ, there's a principle. And this principle has worked over time. Praise the Lord. You look at a man like Daniel. How did Daniel survive Babylon? Was it this principle or according to Christ? The word says, do not defile yourself. Do not eat what is dedicated to idols. Do not drink, you know, alcohol and all of that. And when it was time, Daniel said to them, sorry, I cannot what? This special provision you've made for us, I can't partake of it. My God said I shouldn't. It looked like that was his end. But we saw the mercy of God intervening and making a way beyond his imagination the thing translated to his intellect so that when he was examined what was the bible's re record he was found 10 times better because god will show himself praise the lord god will show himself when he came to the worshiping of the uh, uh, graven image we saw how the three hebrew boys said sorry we can't do it we can't do it and when they were put in the fire what happened God was there with them. Child of God, what we're saying is this. We belong to a kingdom. We don't have much options. Praise the Lord. We don't have much options. The only option we have is the word. And that's why the Bible can say that you and I must through faith and what? Patience inherit the kingdom. Because when you walk it God's way, ah, you need a lot of patience. When you want to go in God's way, you need a lot of patience. But can I give you good news? Good news is that where there is faith, patience is not a problem. Because, you see, the, the Bible says faith, what? Is the substance of what? Things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. So when you know that you know that you know, you can wait. 
When you know that you know that you know, you can wait. For me, like when I travel, I don't know if anyone has that experience. But time at the airport, once I'm inside the airport, six hours is not a problem. Sometimes, the last one we traveled, almost 10 hours, they kept us there. It, was, it began to be a bit of a problem. But you see, once I know that this flight, I'm looking at the screen. Eh? I will see when it is, and I'll board. I don't have a problem. You know where I have problem? When I'm still on the road. Do you understand? And you're approaching the airport. You don't know what will happen. But when it's transit, I've entered the flight. My luggage is inside. My name is there. If they don't see me, they'll call me. There's a way I relax. You see, faith, when you have known that God will do this for you, you can wait. Or better still, when you know that God has done it, through faith and what? Patience. When you know that you know that God knows where you are, you can wait. You're not harassed. The Bible says, I know whom I have what? Believed and I'm fully what? persuaded, I'm persuaded that what I've committed into his hands, he's able to bring it to pass. So, so, so Adam and Eve teaches us that God wants you to have his wisdom. Not your own wisdom. Not your own wisdom. His wisdom. So he says, do it. You say, Lord, I'll do it. It's not saying that whatever God asks us to do is going to be easy. I can't tell you that. Praise the Lord. But then that comes to your prayer. Lord, you want me to do this. I need help. Praise the Lord. You try today, you're not able to do. You go back to him. Where the problem is, is where you count seven reasons not to obey him. Just like Eve. He said he looked and said, saw that the tree was. Every tree that was in that garden had the same qualification. So what's the news? Praise the Lord. What's the news? You want to beat me? Just beat me. Don't tell me that you saw a mosquito on my head. Just, you know, do what you want to do. Don't look for corner. God is calling you and I, brothers and sisters, to leave the wisdom of this world. They are creating problems for us. I was speaking with someone recently, and that is what we have, you know, met now in Nigeria as a nation. People don't want to walk again. People don't want to do honest labor again. Everybody wants breakthrough. Everybody wants, you know, just some magic and make money. So you don't have people learn, learning technical skills. You know, they say there's no work in Nigeria, isn't it? There's no work in Nigeria. How many of us have good uh, uh, um, electricians that you can depend on? You call them, they come. How many of us have good plumbers? How many of us, okay, let me say the one that can touch all of us, Taylor. How many of us are tailors? You have option of two, three good tailors that will deliver on time. <laughs> what of mechanics? How many of us have built house recently? Where did you get your tailors from? Kotonu Togo. What is going on? You know, what is happening is that our people are not go taking the principles. People are not learning. People are not patient. Okay? P people don't want to go through process. People don't want to serve. This thing started, you know, a few years ago. No, not if some, quite some time ago. Okay, you want to do transport business. When my parents did transport business, okay, the way they do it is that if you give a driver a vehicle, he will run it for about three years or so, and then make the money of the vehicle, and then they give him the vehicle, okay? And it, begins, it becomes his own. You know, there's a way they work it out. Those days, after some time, you give someone a vehicle. Cancel, couch me. Tire, bust. Um, brake failed. One story after the other. People are not willing to serve again. Meanwhile, most of the people you know who are big transporters started as drivers. They started as drivers. Some of them started as vulcanizers. And as they served and served and waited, going through the path, going through the path, they were blessed. God blessed them because that's what he does. The countries that we are running to, 
You know, the other day we were watching, a, a, um, um, I think is The Voice or something. And the lady was saying, my father is a truck dri driver, my father. Some of us say, if your father is a truck driver, you deny him. Because you want your father to be honorable. Honorable thief versus truck driver that is uh, uh, responsible. You wouldn't want that. You see, the world, we, we, we have turned everything. And then when you come to church, they will not tell you the truth. I know I prayed that God will bless you miraculously. But you'll be serving. Do you understand? You'll be walking. You'll be walking. You'll be giving honest labor. If you're walking somewhere, and I say sometimes yeah, and I, we, we laugh over it. If you walk in an office and you're more concerned with selling Ankara than giving value in that office, you're a cheat. Listen, how many of us believe the Bible here? How many people were promoted in the Bible by breaking God's principles? Joseph, what lifted him? In Potiphar's house. Because he knew how to do eye service. Service and dedication. When he entered prison. Service over and above. That's you become stupid. You, you serve so much that your contemporaries will say. Your own issue is too much. Leave them. Exaltation comes from who? From God. He's watching your labor. He's watching your faithfulness. Sometimes it's not even in the same environment he'll reward you. Do you understand? Sometimes it won't even be in the same environment. But there's a God in heaven who guides this world with his word. You may not appear smart to men. You may not even appear smart to your husband or to your wife. Because you come back and say, honey... This was what happened at the office. And then your, your, your spouse will say, Chat, did you bring it? He said, no, I gave it back to them. He said, I've told you. You're a problem to us in this home. Look at John. Look at Ada. No school fees for them. Listen, I'm going to leave you. <laughs> Wahala comes. Praise the Lord. But you forget that the primary need of John and Ada is God's favor. If you steal money to pay their school fees, they can go there and become Bukaniya. And become Aye. Eh? And you see John, he's moving like this. The money you stole is moving him. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Praise the Lord. God will give us wisdom. I say God will give us what? Wisdom. Luke 12, 32 says, do not fear little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to do what? To give you the kingdom. It's the father's good pleasure to give you and I the kingdom. To give us the kingdom. So the word of God guides us. The apostle Paul says the love of Christ constrains or sometimes it's constraining. You're in situations and the word of God just constrains you. It doesn't allow you to do what you know you can do, what you feel you should do, especially when you come to church like this. You plan what you're going to do, and then the word of God will just hit you in that particular circumstance. And you almost be regretting, why did I come? Because now you know you have to obey. How many have regretted coming for things like that? You just wish, ah, ah, this man should have allowed me. Many years ago, we had somebody in church, some senior person in church, who left church and stopped coming for a while. And he told somebody that the reason he stopped coming to church for a while is that there's a business he's pursuing. And that business, he doesn't want to come to church and sit. And your, Pastor Ike, your husband will now go and say something and he won't be able to continue. Uh, let him hit the money and then... <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, so, 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 so but, but, but we are learning, praise the Lord, in this year, we will trust him and his word will work for us. Praise the Lord. Some of us here will walk on water. Do you understand? Some of us will be a wonder. You see, these things are written. He says the things which are written are written for our word. Example, it's not only Joseph that is going to be called up, but Joseph being called up is not by you praying for destiny helper. No, it's by you walking in the word. Joseph walked in the word. When temptation came, what did he say to Potiphar's wife? It, uh, this thing is not between me and your attractiveness and your, uh, your guy husband. There is a God in heaven. I can't displease him. And when the God in heaven saw Joseph's faithfulness, what did the God in heaven do? Did he deliver him? 
God in heaven says, step it up. How many of us remember those, um, what's those games? Is it Pokemon? Too? What, what are those? Nintendo. Eh? There is a Nintendo game. Eh? Nintendo there. Pokemon, thank you. You know when you're playing Pokemon, Pokemon, and you catch all the coconuts that the monkey's throwing, what does the game do? You do wah, 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 and take it to another level. <laughs> and then they begin to drop four coconuts at a time. Many times, <laughs> many times, that's what happens to us as believers. You start, you come to church like this, you're excited, I'm going to the, and you do the first one, and you go home thinking that the next morning your boss is going to call you and tell everybody in the office, Behold, a righteous man. This is how you are to be him. But you go, Wahala has doubled. What has happened is that the game has stepped you up. They are seeing that you are a candidate for promotion. But if your faith is not strong, at that point you compromise. So they took Joseph, the same Joseph, that was faithful to God, and put him in prison. And it has seemed as though God had abandoned him. But what we know now as we read the scriptures is that what they say, they put uh, uh, Joseph in stocks in prison and God was what? With him. God was with him. Somebody say, I need God with me. And he's more than enough. People of God, situations, circumstances, institutions, men and all of them are under God's control. They're under God's control. So I want to round up. At the throne uh, crossover service, we looked at John 2. John 2, we saw Jesus' mother introducing something to us, a principle. In verse 5, John 2, 5, after she had made a request to our Lord Jesus, she said to the servants, whatever he says to you, what? Do it. I want to believe that in the house, Jesus had done some things. Mommy, don't go. Mommy, don't go. Mommy said, I have to go. I have to go. It's time. She will go and say, nobody came. Then she'll come back and realize, this small boy, <laughs> I think whatever you say in this house, I should be doing it. Another day, say, what do you know? Keep quiet. She'll go and find out. So she had come over time to realize that no matter the circumstance, and what is key in that account, brethren, what is key in that account is that before she said what she said, there was no hope. Verse 4, let's see verse 4. What did Jesus say to her? Woman, what does what have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. At this time, some of us will say, I even regret asking you. Hmm? Why did I even bother asking? Do you understand? That's what he said. He said, woman, what does your concern? My hour. So it's a time to give up. But Mary had learned by experience. That whether you're angry with him, you're happy with him. I saw someone in church tonight. Listen to me. Whether you're happy with the way he's doing it or you don't like the way he's doing it, just obey him. <laughs> Do you understand? There was no hope. I believe she must have been walking on and say, whatever he says, what? Do it. Whatever he says. He's ogre. Yes, you are the Lord. And now, what did he say, really? What did Jesus say? The next verse, 6, six says, Now there were there six water pots of stone, okay, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons a piece of what? Of water. Okay? Se 7 says, Jesus said to them, what? Fill the water pots with what? What are we looking for here? We're looking for wine. In our lives, many of us here, we're looking for something, isn't it? Praise God. When Jesus gives us an instruction, oftentimes it will not be in the zone where you're expecting God to come. But he knows what he's doing. Somebody say, he always knows what he's doing. He always knows what he's doing. He always does. Okay? So what happened? They say fill, and they fill them up. And he said, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. Some what? Water or wine? We don't know. Praise the Lord. Where the Bible gave us the unveiling was when the master of the feast tasted it. And then the servants themselves knew that their obedience had brought result. Child of God, the word must be exalted over all. 
what you and I are learning tonight is a bit of high tech because we can begin to, you know, you know, praise the Lord. You know, in the uh, account we looked at on Sunday where the bread was kept and the next day it turned into yeah, uh, bread worms and stank, okay? Because of the shortness of the time, the, the lesson can be learned easily, okay? But there are some consequences that don't come in one day. Are you with me? There are some that the benefits or the cost don't appear in the, the next day. That whole account was early training. So when they didn't gather twice, the next day they starve. But be sure next Friday they will gather twice. Those who gathered and stank, be sure that the next time they won't. So the results were immediately there. But what we want to learn now, because they see our own time and seasons are different. So that you can stay with God for two weeks. You can stay with him for two months. You can stay two years. As long as you know you have obeyed him. You know that you can't fail. Praise the Lord. You know he can't fail. You know that surely this Jesus, the son of God, will make your water become wine. Somebody say amen. amen. We're going to pray. I want, I, want, I want us to round up very quickly. We're going to pray. Uh, quite a few things I'm not able to tell you, but we're going to pray. Hebrews 13, there's a passage, there, there's a verse of scripture there, there's a statement there, which, you know, uh, we quote it, you know, all the time. But we're just seeing how apt it is, you know, with what we are learning. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Verse 5 says, let, I, I, some of those things I like to take it, read it for myself. It says, let my conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as I have. Why? Why should I be content? Why shouldn't I push? Why shouldn't I go? Why shouldn't I? It says what? It says, for he himself has said what? I will never leave you nor what? Forsake you. You know what he's saying here? <laughs> he's saying, whatever you don't have, don't worry, you have me. Do you understand? You know what you don't have. Praise the Lord. Okay, let, 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 let me take it this way. Is this illustration that take our time? Ah, uh, hallelujah. A problem that has a solution, you know, is no longer a problem. <laughs> Praise the Lord. A problem that has a solution is no longer a problem. How many of us are hungry now? You haven't eaten. You're hungry. God bless little children. Praise the Lord. Because some of the adults won't raise their hands. But you see, uh, 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 Pastor Ronke, you're hungry now. Now, what, when you get home, what you will have is appetite. You know why? Because there is food before you. Hunger that has food in front of it is called appetite. Where there is food, the problem is no appetite. So hunger that should have been a problem becomes a blessing. So they say food before you say, I don't have appetite. But if you came hungry, when the food meets with your hunger, is hallelujah. Now what I'm trying to say to you is that every need, problem, challenge you have, God says, I am with you. <laughs> verse 6 it says so we may boldly declare what the Lord is my helper I will not fear let's rise on our feet 2022 this is our stand the Lord is my what help I am living in the word I'm trusting in the word. They say that organization, this door doesn't open. Tomorrow, go out in the word. The Lord is my helper. I don't know anybody there. The Lord says, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Walk towards that environment like someone is leading you physically. Is someone hearing me? Why? Because he is Jehovah. He is almighty. 
He's able to do much more than you can ask or imagine. This evening, just begin to thank him. Begin to thank him for his promise. He says, he will not leave me, will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will not find you trusting in him and back out. He will not see you expecting him to show up and not show up. Tonight, go to the Lord and say to him, Lord, I drop my wisdom. I refuse to lean on the wisdom of men. I refuse to trust in chariots and in horses. I put my faith in you. In this year 2022, you are God. It is not about the bread. It is not about the matter. It is about the word. You are my God. I will trust in you. Talk to him. And if there are specific situations that you're already dealing with, then break it down to the Lord. Break it down to the Lord and let him know that a child, a daughter is coming tonight to the father to say, I have you. I have you. I will not fear. I have you. I will trust. I have you. I will wait. I have you. I will not panic. I have you. I know you're working out something. And on my own path, I will trust and obey. I will trust and obey. Let the Lord know. Let the Lord have your attention. Let him have your trust. Let him have your surrender. Let him say indeed, this daughter of mine, this son of mine, this he has committed. You know the Bible says, it says, let your help be unto us according as our trust is in you. That's what he's saying. So this year, now Lord, hey, hey. You are my healer. I thank you. Beyond what anybody can say. Beyond the chemicals that I may be taking as drugs. Beyond what the diagnosis have revealed. You are my healer. You are my God. I trust in you. I trust in you. I trust in you. Oh, I have challenges. As a nation, we have challenges. When I want to pray for Nigeria, one of the first statements I let the Lord know is that we have you. So I thank him. As big as the problems of Nigeria are, our God is bigger. Our God is bigger. So a problem is a problem. When I can't see the solution, my God is bigger. Is it concerning the issues of provision? My God is bigger. Your God, our God, He's a way maker. He's mighty to save. Mighty to deliver. Father, we thank you. All that is just saying is trust in me. Don't walk in your wisdom. Don't walk in your wisdom. But if I say to do it, just do it. Just do it. Trust in him. Trust in him. Trust in the Lord. And be of good courage. Do not be wise in your own understanding. Lean wholly on him. Let him know, my father, my God, I am your child. I am your child. I lean on you. Some of us, maybe it's time to commit our affairs, academics, business, careers into his hands. We've learned some things here that may be shaking the way things are done. But this evening, God will give you another wisdom. There's a wisdom that is from above. It comes with power. It comes with authority. It comes with an announcement. He just causes things to fall in place. That's what he did for Daniel. Ten times better. You learn somebody's language in a couple of years and you know the language better than them. He learned the Babylonian language and knew it better than them. There's what is called native tongue. Daniel knew it better than the Babylonians because the power of God came upon him. Somebody received power to operate this year. Receive power to operate with superior wisdom, superior insight. You won't speak as a man. You'll sit in meetings and God will be giving you secrets.
God will be giving you insight. You will know what to do. You will know how to do it. Things that were not taught by your lecturers. Things that were not taught in business school. Lord, let your children receive your help. Let them testify that we realize that we didn't operate like ordinary men. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Let's just appreciate the Lord. Let's appreciate the Lord. Okay, Father, we thank you. We just thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We just give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We magnify your name. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, Father. We thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your word. Thank you for whatever you say to us, Lord. Whatever you have said to us in your word, Lord God Almighty, we will do it in this year in the name of Jesus. Thank you for fresh opportunity. Thank you for fresh insight. Thank you for opening our eyes to understand that we need to trust you. We need to trust you one more time. We need to trust you over and over and over again. Our help is in you, Lord. Our strength comes from you. There is only hope in you. Without you, there is no hope. King of kings, we say thank you. We bless and glorify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. Shall we give our offering quickly? While the announcement goes through. Wonderful and delightful to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity. Show some love to someone by inviting them to be part of next Sunday's friendship service by 9 a.m. See, see you there. there. Get connected with our 30 minutes power packed lunch hour meeting where we praise God, share the word, give praise reports, and jointly pray over our prayer request. Virtually every prayer request raised in this meeting is followed by testimonies to the glory of God. Please, join us at Eden between 1 to 1.30 p.m. every Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You will testify. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you for the privilege you've given us to be able to give back to you. We thank you for the grace to give to your work. We ask, King of Glory, that you bless every pocket, every hand that has given. You also bless every hand that is not able to give today because we know that you are the greatest provider and that you provide for each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Thank you because indeed this will be used for the expansion of your work here on earth in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for increase on all sides in the name of Jesus. And above all, Father, we say thank you because we trust you and we continue to trust you because you will forever remain faithful. Blessed be your holy name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Is there anyone who is here for the first time today? For today is your first day in the Father's Church. It's your first time worshiping today. Awesome. Okay, that's great. Now, um, choir, do you know this song? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Can we sing it? Not just the choir, the entire church. So let's use it to close this. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct 
source. You are a faithful God. We know clearly as is written in the scriptures that it is your desire to give us the kingdom. We thank you King of glory. Blessed be your holy name Father. Let this word profit us. Let it direct us. Let it instruct us. Let it be our food as we sleep and as we wake up in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you King of glory. You are a faithful God. You are a faithful God. We will trust you. We will obey you. We will follow your word. We will follow the path that you've given unto us. The Bible says that your word is a light unto my path. Thank you, King of glory. Song like writer wrote and said, as the deer panted after the water broke, so my heart longs for you. Thank you, our God and our Father. Blessed be your holy name forevermore. And may we share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah.